Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Headmaster Albus Dumbledore, one of Merlin First Class, Grand Sork, Chief Warlock, Supreme Mugwomp, International Confred of Wizards. Dear Mr Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you have a place at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find enclosed all the necessary books and equipment terms beginning on September the 1st. We await your owl by no later than the 31st of July. Yours sincerely, Minerva McGonagall, Deputy Headmistress. Questions exploded inside Harry's head like fireworks and he couldn't decide which to ask first. After a few minutes, he stammered, what does it mean? They await my owl? Galloping, Gorgons, that reminds me, said Hagrid, clapping a hand to his forehead with enough force to knock over a cart horse and from yet another pocket inside of his overcoat, he peeled an owl, a real live, rather fluffy looking owl. A long quill and a roll of parchment with his tongue between his teeth, he scribbled a note which Harry could read upside down. Dear Mr Dumbledore, given Harry this letter, taking him to buy his things tomorrow. Weather's horrible. Hope you're well. Hagrid. Hagrid rolled up the note, gave it to the owl, which clamped it in his beak, went to the door and threw the owl out into the storm. Then he came back and sat down as though this was normal as talking on the phone. Harry realised his mouth was open and closed it quickly. Where was I? said Hagrid. But at the moment, Uncle Vernon, still ashen-faced, but looking very angry, moved into the firelight. He's not going, he said. Hagrid grunted. I'd like to see you, great muggle, like you stop him, he said. A what? said Harry, interested. A, a muggle, said Harry. Hagrid. It's what we call non-magic folk, like them. And it's your bad luck. You grew up in a family of the biggest muggles I've ever laid my eyes on. We swore when we took him, we'd put a stop to that rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. We swore we'd stamp it out of him. Wizard indeed. You knew, said Harry. You knew I'm a, I'm a wizard. Knew, shrieked Aunt Petunia suddenly. Knew? Of course we knew. How could you not be? My dratted sister being what she was. Oh, she got a letter just like that and disappeared off to that school and came home every holiday with her pockets full of frog spawn turning into teacups into rats it was the only one who saw her i was the only one who saw her for what she was a freak but for my mother and father oh no it was lily this and lily that they were proud of having a witch in the family she stopped to draw breath and then went ranting on it seemed that she hadn't been waiting to say this for all these years then she met that potter at that school and they left and got married and had you and of course I knew you'd just be the same, just as strange, just as, as abnormal. And if then you please, she went and got herself blown up and we landed with you. Harry had gone very white. As soon as he found out, his found his voice, he said, blown up? You told me they died in a car crash. Car crash? roared Hagrid, jumping so angrily that the Dursley scuttled back into the corner. How could a car crash kill Lily and James Potter? It's an outrage! A scandal! Harry Potter, knowing his own story, when every kid in the whole world of ours knows his name. But why? What happened? asked Harry urgently. The anger faded from Hagrid's eyes. He suddenly looked anxious. I never expected this, he said in a low, worried voice. I had no idea when Dumbledore told me there might be trouble getting hold of you. How much he didn't know. Ah, Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell you, but someone's got her. Yeah, can't go off to Hogwarts not knowing. Throw a dirty look at the Dursleys. Well, it's best you know as much as I can tell you. Mind, I can't tell you everything. It's a great mystery, parts of it. He sat down and stared into the fireplace for a few seconds and then said, It begins, I suppose, with a person called... But it's incredible, yeah, I don't know his name. Everyone in our world knows. Who? Well, I, I don't like saying the name if I can help it. No one does. Why not? Go big goggles, Harry. People are still scared. Blimey, this is difficult. See, there was a wizard who went bad. As bad as you could go. Worse. Worse than worse. His name was Hagrid Gulp, but no words came out. Could you write it down? Harry suggested. Nah. 
can't spell it. All right, Voldemort, Hagrid shuddered. Don't make me say it again. Anyway, this, this wizard, about 20 years ago now, started looking for followers. Got him too. Some were afraid. Some just wanted a bit of his power, because he was getting himself power all right. Dark days, Harry. Didn't know who to trust. Didn't dare get friendly with strange wizards or witches. Terrible things happened. He was taken over, of course. Calm stood up to him and killed him. Probably one of the only safe places left was Hogwarts. Reckon Dumbledore's the only one you know who was afraid of. Didn't dare try taking the school. Not just them, anyway. Now, your mum and dad were as good as a witch and any wizard as I ever knew. Head boy and girl at Hogwarts in their days. Suppose the mystery is why you know who never tried to get him on his side before. Probably knew they were too close to Dumbledore to want anything to do with the dark side. Maybe he thought he could persuade him. Maybe he just wanted him out of their way. All anyone knows, he turned up in the village where you was living on Halloween ten years ago. You were just a year old. He came into your house and... And Hagrid pulled out one of a very dirty spotted handkerchief and blew his nose with a sound like a foghorn. Sorry, he said, but it's that sad. Knew your mum and dad and never knew any nicer people. You couldn't find anyway. You know who killed him. And then, and this is the real mystery of the thing, he tried to kill you too. Body to make a clean job of it, I suppose, or maybe he just liked killing by then. But he couldn't do it. Never wondered how you got that mark on your forehead. That was no ordinary cut. That's what you got from a powerful evil curse touches you. Took care of your mom and dad and your house even, but it didn't work on you. And that's why you're famous, Harry. No one ever lived after he decided to kill him. No one except you. And he killed some of the best witches and wizards out there. The McKinnons, the Bones, the Pruitts. And you was only a baby and you lived. Something very painful was going on in Harry's mind. As Hagrid's story came to a close, he saw again the blinding flash of green light more clearly than he ever remembered it before. And he remembered something else for the first time in his life. A high, cold, cruel laugh. Hagrid was watching him sadly. Took you from the ruined house myself, on Dumbledore's orders. Brought you to this lot. <laughs> Load of old tush, said Uncle Vernon. Harry jumped. He'd almost forgotten that Dursleys were there. Uncle Vernon certainly seemed to have got back his courage. He was glaring at Hagrid and his fists were clenched. Now you listen here, boy, he snarled. I accept. There's something strange about you. Probably nothing a good beating wouldn't have cured. And as for all about that parents, well, they were weird. There's no denying it. And the world's better off without them, in my opinion. Ask for all they got, getting mixed up with those wizarding types. Just what I expected. Always knew they'd come out to the sticky end. But at that moment, Hagrid leapt from the sofa and drew a battered pink umbrella from inside his coat, pointing at Uncle Vernon like a sword. He said, I'm warning you, Dursley. I'm warning you. One more word. In danger of being speared on the end of an umbrella by a bearded giant, Uncle Vernon's courage failed again. He flattered himself against the wall and fell silent. That's better, said Hagrid, breathing heavily and sitting back down on the sofa which this time sagged right down onto the floor. Harry, meanwhile, still had questions to ask. Hundreds of them. But what happened to Vault? Sorry, I mean, you know who? Good question, Harry. Disappeared. Vanished. Same night he tried to kill you. Makes you even more famous. That's the biggest mystery, you see. He's getting more and more powerful. Why'd he go? Some say he died. Cod swallow, in my opinion. Don't know if he'd ever be human enough left in him to die. Some say he's still out there, biding his time, like, but I don't believe it. People who were on his side came back to your to ours. Some of them came out of kindness, traces. Don't reckon they could have done it if he wasn't coming back. Most of us reckon he's still out there somewhere, but lost his powers, too weak to carry on. Because something about you finished him, Harry. There was something going on that night he couldn't count on. I don't know what it was. No one does. But something about you stopped him all right. 